very good morning to all uh, participants from bangladesh india and sri lanka and uh, my dear all uh, experts and uh, jitan ji and uh, uh, simka director my director dr Pro professor madhu parar ji and uh, i am really happy to introduce uh, today's expert uh, uh, professor mustafa azad kamal is presently working at Bangladesh Open University as Dean of School of Business. He has been engaged in open and distance learning for last 22 years. He got specialized training on open distance learning at uh, Waterloo University, Canada, and also completed certificate and in instructional design in learning from Open Polytechnic uh, New, New Zealand. He is currently working as a member of the International Academic Board of Commonwealth Executive MBA and MPA programs, Commonwealth of Learning, Vancouver, Canada. He is also a part of consultant of Commonwealth of Learning for uh, technology enabled learning, open and distance learning, and OER. Professor Mustafa is a Creative Commons certified trainer on open educational resources and open licenses. He is also Creative Commons Fellow for Open Leadership. Professor Mustafa is the country representative for Creative Commons in Bangladesh chapter and also member of 15 member central, central membership committee of Creative Commons USA. He is, also, he is the president of the Center for Open Knowledge, Bangladesh. Center for Open Knowledge is mostly focusing on research, awareness, and policy development relating to open education resources, open access, open data, open science, and open innovations, and open government. I'm really happy to invite uh, uh, Professor Mustafa Ajad Kamal. He is very known face not only in uh, Commonwealth Asia, but also in all Commonwealth countries among and he is uh, closely uh, the, involved in various assignments of Commonwealth of Learning in research as well as capacity building. I welcome Professor Mustafa Ajad Kamal for his uh, very nice uh, uh, session. We will learn and we will enjoy with this. Professor Mustafa Ajad Kamal, over. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manarji and uh, 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 my Honorable uh, Professor Madhu Parha, the, the Director Simka, and uh, uh, Jitandraji. So I'm sorry for the spelling mistake. And uh, Dr. Nisha Ji, and uh, Ojit Kumarji, and uh, Ashish Kumarji, and uh, of course, uh, Dr. Manarji. So oh, I'm very much glad uh, and uh, very much grateful to Simka especially the director Simka, madam, uh, for inviting me in this uh, very uh, important uh, workshop. So I will try to uh, go very fast because the time is very short for this kind of technical sessions. So I will try to go very fast and uh, the participants, uh, uh, so they will uh, be engaged uh, in the presentation as well as some uh, exercise will, uh, exercises will be there. So we'll work together. So let me uh, share the screen. Okay, fine. So uh, I already uh, shared uh, as, as the plan of today, today's session, I already shared the PU workshop diagnostic survey. So all the participants are required to uh, submit this diagnostic survey uh, in uh, 10 to 15 minutes time. But at the same time, we'll uh, try to speak and uh, work together. So it is very important that you are submitting this uh, just uh, immediately, because after that you have another feedback survey after the workshop. And uh, regarding the workshop flow, I will uh, begin with uh, uh, some one exercise, very small exercise. I think uh, this uh, webinar uh, uh, format doesn't allow breakout sessions, but okay, we I, I created a form. So all the participants will uh, attend uh, a kind of, uh, quiz uh, 
and well, they will submit online so that uh, I, I will, uh, we will find the gaps. So what are the gaps? What are the, the understanding, current level of understanding about uh, the educational resources? So when we are using these educational resources, what is the current understanding level? So uh, we'll go there. And then, uh, okay. Uh, then uh, the third, so workshop flow will be uh, a video. We'll play this video. So in most of the cases, I will skip a little bit because of the time limitation. So I will skip, uh, you can watch that later. Uh, and then I will start my presentation. So before the presentation, I have one or two very short, brief activities. And then after the presentation, we will have some uh, videos, the related videos related to copyright basics. Another is, uh, it is a movie. Uh, I was a part of this movie also. So it has been developed in, in uh, 2018. So I was in Canada that time in a, in a conference. So they, they recorded the, uh, all these talks. It's a very nice uh, uh, movie, very sure, uh, very specific regarding the paywall, the business of the scholarship, the uh, business of the pub, uh, journals and uh, the paywall journals and, and publishers, etc. So, uh, and then we'll come to uh, open access policy. So, okay, so this is uh, not important. So my wall, so if anyone can uh, is interested, they can watch it, but it's mostly in Bangla. So maybe it will not be, uh, that's I put it uh, since uh, some people are from Bangladesh there, they can watch later. And then copyright basics, there will be a quiz after that. And uh, I will talk about the international perspective. So there should be a quiz, maybe I forgot to add it. Okay, so it's not a problem. So we will have this quiz and then I will talk on this. And the second, uh, and, and we have some case studies. This will be the activity. So I'll not do it uh, now uh, within the workshop. So it will go to your activity. So uh, WF5, watch, uh, workshop flow five, it is your activity, part of your activity. So keep it uh, in your mind. And then uh, workshop flow six, uh, then we'll start uh, talking about openness. So we'll have some uh, discussion on openness first then we'll uh, see what uh, are the international commitments about uh, uh, resource sharing, about uh, uh, including the people into the, the resources, etc. What are the mission mandates and missions of UNESCO, the countries? So there are some uh, literature there. So we'll not go through that, but we'll see the basic points on the tone. And then creativity, and there is a movie. So why sharing? Uh, or uh, when, or when we uh, build something on the past, build something using the other documents which are already existed, existed uh, uh, on internet, on, 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 on net or somewhere else. Uh, so how it promotes our creativity, how it actually promotes our uh, uh, innovation. So that is what I will see there. And then uh, when we share, everybody wins. There is a small video two or three minutes video, if we have time, we'll see. So that means we, if we share, we, everybody owns. So that is, that is a very, very nice video. And uh, then my presentation will start and followed by, uh, following the presentation, we have some videos we can watch whatever we can. And then uh, we'll try to go some hands-on uh, practice exercises, how to find the OER. So it's very important. We have to know it. And then how to attribute properly. So if we use the OER, so how will attribute? So there are some uh, uh, strategies and, and, and tools, we'll use that. And then finally, uh, how, when we actually use OER, we have to remix, we have to uh, revise. Sometimes we have to mix up a lot of things together to uh, make the resource meaningful for our learners. So in that case, uh, we will watch this video and uh, we'll understand how to mix. And then uh, we'll have some exercises. A lot of uh, quizzes are there. So we can uh, look into these quizzes and uh, you can uh, just, I'll, I'll show one uh, video from my wall where uh, I remix a lot of uh, 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 images, a lot of videos from different uh, OER, uh, different uh, websites which are OER, then uh, I put a license on 
the whole document. So this is a this can be best example of remixing. It's not uh, because of mine, but I, I try to use it. So maybe you can watch it later and you can have some idea on that. And then how to uh, attribute correctly and so on. So it is very important how to attribute correctly. So we had uh, one is here how to attribute. I think this is a kind of copy, yeah, copy first, okay. And then refreshing time. So the, another quiz, you'll be happy to attend this quiz. It's very, very simple and uh, all the answers are there. So you'll be happy with that. And then uh, we are challenged. So we'll check whether you understood these things correctly or not. This is uh, at the end, you will do it. And I added a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there's a discussion forum, so it will continue uh, as long as this, uh, we have the access to this platform, so it will continue. And then I added a lot of resources and I will add more even. So the, the repositories and resources. So let us go to the presentation now. And before the presentation, we say we will uh, start with uh, a very brief, uh, Okay, so we'll use this uh, uh, OER wall. I mean, uh, it's a kind of padlet. So we'll use this always. So when I, I'll ask you to write anything, you will just click here and it will create a window for you and you can write here or you can uh, link up anything, you can upload anything. So you can do this because you know now how to uh, work on uh, Google Sheet, Google Doc, etc., etc. And Nishaji uh, yesterday, she taught very uh, exciting uh, tools you are now familiar with. So if you like to do something on the tool, you can upload here so we can see together. So let us uh, now uh, move to our uh, main work. So, uh, okay, so identify the gaps. So there is a form here. So you can see a form here. Just quickly submit this form in three minutes. So it's not that much uh, you need to think that much, but I need to uh, learn what you are thinking about educational resources in terms of use, in terms of sharing, etc. So please submit it now. So I am sharing it on, on your WhatsApp. If uh, someone is facing problem accessing uh, the platform, I am just sharing it here. So just submit it now in three minutes. So you click here and submit it. Okay, by that time I can uh, okay keep it open. So then we will watch this uh, video. Then I'll go to the presentation. So we have to go fast because a lot of things we have to cover. So, uh, but all the resources are here. Doesn't matter if we cannot touch everything. I don't expect even that I will, will start, uh, touch everything since uh, it is a platform. Uh, so in, in this platform, you can enter anytime and I can uh, add any, any other resources also which are relevant to this uh, session. So it's not a problem. I hope that if you go through all these links and all these presentations, you will at least have an idea how to use OER, how to find OER, how to use OER for your teaching learning. So please uh, submit uh, that, yeah. Let me check. Okay, so I'm not getting, yeah, two responses are here. Very good. So I expect that uh, you will complete in, in uh, another two minutes. So it is uh, now uh, 11, 16 in Bangladesh. Uh, in India, I think at 10, 46. So by 10, uh, 50 Indian time, you must submit it. Then we'll move. Okay, so let us uh, just uh, at the same time, we can talk, no, no problem. So we can, uh, we can see that uh, all of us uh, are using uh, text, audio, video, and uh, okay, and also emails, I, I forgot to put emails. So you are using emails also. A lot of images we need to use. So, uh, so we can understand that uh, we are using all these things together. 
So we are using a uh, text, audio, video, everything. And then, so then uh, we can see that uh, how you derive the educational resources. So derive the educational resources. Uh, okay, so almost a 90% up to now, 90% said I create by myself. A uh, download from internet, very good. Yeah, we all do this. And photocopy from books, 43%. Ah, uh, it's good that we are using uh, the resources which are being created by us. I don't know whether we are creating totally new or we are using uh, the, the resources which are on internet and then we compile and we uh, uh, produce the things, produce the resources for the students. So anyhow, uh, everybody is using internet, that's true. And also uh, they create the resources for, for their students. Then the third question was, what are the main resources of uh, your what are the main sources of your educational resources? What are the main sources? Ah, okay, 93% Google. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, is there anybody who are uh, not uh, using Google? Okay, fine. As you said, uh, YouTube for video or sure YouTube and original textbook from stores. Original textbook from source. So that is a question here. So I'll ask this question to you, that uh, why you are thinking that you are always uh, buying the original books. Original books are highly expensive. So if we go to buy original book from a uh, bookstore, it will take say uh, 2,500 taka, but if you buy it uh, a photocopy book from a photocopy market, so we can get it by 150 taka. So, uh, it is uh, very uh, difficult uh, that uh, to say that the original print, so I should write uh, original, should have uh, written original prints. Okay, it's not the problem. So let us move uh, to the fourth question. Do you customize your teaching learning resources? You said yes, very good. So most of, the, uh, most of us uh, are customizing, not using the same thing. So we need to, when you go to customize, you need to edit, you need to revise, you need to remix, you have to do it. So otherwise it's not possible to customize. When I go to download something and if I like to customize, I have to download uh, uh, many things and then I put together or I add something with that package. So this is another thing. And uh, what things you mainly check while the students submit assignments? What things you mainly check? Okay, so uh, you said uh, content relevance. Okay, plagiarism, another point. Format, okay, and sources of the uh, resources. Sources of the resources. So it's a big issue. So we sometimes, it seems that sometimes, because it is almost only 14%, that means we sometimes don't actually uh, uh, aware of uh, checking the source. So sometimes we, what we do, we uh, look at the assignments, whether it is relevant uh, uh, for my uh, uh, discussion or content, etc., or for my course, for my uh, uh, objectives. So if it is relevant, it goes to, with my uh, learning outcomes, then it's fine. Okay, so here's again a question is, uh, why you don't care this? So don't you think that it, it is not important? So we will see that, we will talk about that. And then how do you share the teaching learning materials? You said by email, fine. Said WhatsApp, this is good, through LMS, fine. Okay, and Google Classroom. So then we have to understand when you share or drop something uh, on a platform, uh, like Google Classroom, like uh, on LMS, uh, it can be Moodle or anything else, or a web portal. Are we aware of uh, the, the copyright or legal provision of that uh, uh, platform? So if I put something on this platform, uh, is my resource actually uh, 
becomes the property of that platform or not whether i have any control on that uh, resource or not are we aware of the educational resources you use are not violating the legal provision you said uh, uh slightly away slightly very good you you guys are very much honest that's the uh, good thing so you are you are just always trying to uh, mentioning uh, the correct thing this is very nice i'm happy for that so uh, most of you are telling that so it is uh, you are slightly aware and uh, some of you told uh, for the 34 percent fully aware okay so now let us go to our uh, presentation what actually uh, we uh, actually try to uh, understand or try to share with you is uh, all about this so right now whether we are uh, whether we are uh, carrying these copyright provisions legal provisions so we have to understand what why and what next so what is what do we mean by copyright and why copyright is important we have to think of copyright and if something is copyrighted so what's going on there is there any 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 way to find some resources which uh, can be used uh, with uh, the permission of the author or which can be used without the permission permission is given there so we have to, to uh, look into this so if there is an, any any uh, resource there uh, which uh, i can use freely that's good for us we don't need to write the author and etc so why we have to be careful on that so let us uh, start the presentation now on okay okay so what are the common challenges we face by referring uh, using a uh, creator academic resources these are the questions you use of online resources for better uh, teaching learning okay so uh, in this case we already a discussion we covered through the uh, google form and now why copyright matters actually copyright is a very important area of law we will not go through all the slides i will just uh, focus on the basic things so when you talk about copyright why why it matters actually and what is that so if you talk about copyright uh, if you look at the big brief history you can see it i, I already uh, linked about all these things you can see that and the first copyright statute uh, it is called a statute of na uh, it was in england in uh, 1740 so it was for 14 years only 14 years so uh, the government gave uh, the uh, permission uh, for the books i mean the books producers or authors to preserve this uh, legal uh, protection uh, so that they can uh, just earn their money, they can uh, protect their resources so that uh, they can copy, they can sell everything they can do, but other ones, other people cannot do it without their permission. So uh, that's the, the main point. It, it was started only with 14 years. Now it is long. I mean, uh, after the death, it is uh, minimum 60 years, and uh, we have 90 years also maximum uh, in some countries like US or so on. So uh, these are the things. So let us go quickly because it's very important. So copyright actually stands on uh, a few rationals. One is utilitarian, which is which we call economy. So the copyright holder can earn money out of it. They can copy. They can just make uh, the copy as much as they like and they can share it. So this is an utilitarian uh, rational. And another is moral right. So I am writing something and I must have the moral right. Even if I don't have the copyright. For example, if I write something for my university, the my university as a, as a, as a condition of the employment, the university got the copyright. I don't uh, have the copyright uh, copyright uh, permission for me, but I got the moral right. So if anyone wants to change it, they must think that they must not uh, 
forget to recognize me. This is my resource, they must recognize me. And then they don't, they should not, or they must not forget uh, the works integrity. So I developed this and I got a philosophy behind it. So another person cannot change the meaning of it. So that integrity must be uh, maintained when they uh, use my resource. And then a related right, sometimes in some countries, uh, some other rights, extra rights are, are uh, added into the copyright law. So that is uh, country to country may vary. And some uh, transfer rights. So, you know, as part of the copyright law, you can transfer the right to anybody else. You can assign someone. So you can transfer the right to the assignment. This is possible also. So these are the basic things. So when it, something is copyrighted, I will enjoy all these things if I am the owner of the copyright holder. And also the author also got the moral right. So, uh, so transfer rights, we said the assignment licensing. So if I am the owner of the uh, copyright, I am the copyright holder, I have these two authority. One is assignment. I can assign anybody and I can transfer the right. And also I can put the license, license means permission. I can permit the, the users, prospective users or potential users to use it maybe without my permission. Whatever license I will get, they will use it. They will not require any permission sometimes or they can have permission. So it depends on the license, actually how the license is written. So these two things, one is we can transfer it to uh, the assignee who will enjoy all these benefits and another is licensing uh, I can allow them to use it I can permit them to use it without asking me and the permission the type of the permission can be different okay so uh, what are the exclusive right of the copyright holder I mean if I am the copyright holder what are the rights I will enjoy so I will get credit if you use my document, you must credit me. For these slides, I am sharing with uh, Simka and uh, Uttarakhand University. So when they will use it for their purpose, if it works anyway, then they will uh, acknowledge me. So that is that is how I will get the credit. And uh, they can copy if I put the license there. Otherwise, they cannot copy. I can copy. Uh, I can distribute. I can put license on it. I can. Uh, sell it if I like. I can uh, perform if something, for example, if I uh, uh, write a, uh, uh, for example, book or uh, a, uh, uh, any kind of uh, drama or something like that. So any script I prepare, so I can perform also. I can uh, use that script for performance. I can uh, create video or anyone, uh, I can hire anyone to create this video by using that script. So that's possible. So uh, these are the, and some restrictions are there. So you cannot uh, distribute unauthorizedly, you cannot copy, you cannot download, you cannot, cannot do the, any, anything. So when uh, something is copyrighted, you cannot copy it. You can cite sometimes, that is a fair use, fair dealing. So it's called fair dealing or fair use. Fair use is called, in, 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 this fair use is used in uh, USA and fair dealing is used in uh, UK, the same thing. So the copyright law got this. So these are not uniform. In USA, you will find the fair deal is of one kind and another country fair deal is, uh, is of another kind. So copyright examples. So yes, if you are the course of your employment, you can create something, but the university will be the copyright holder. If it depends on the agreement with you and uh, independent contractors. So these are the things actually uh, the university or institution or yourself so it depends what type of contract you are going with the university, with the uh, donors or something like that. So on basis of that, uh, the, the copyrights uh, will be designed. So will be the copyright holder, it depends on that. And the types. So you have a lot of things, artistic awards, translation, adaptation, collection of literature, uh, or a lot of things are there, uh, computer software even. Uh, applied art, industrial designs, models, all are under copyright. So your life is under copyright. The whole thing we are using, everything uh, are under copyright. Only the two things are not copyrighted. One is fact 
and other is idea as long as these are not tangible. So I have an idea. If I uh, share it with uh, uh, Dr. Manash, and then if he implements it, I cannot demand that ah, this is my idea. I have the right. Uh, you don't have this right to use it. It's, no, I shared the idea, but it is not explicit or tangible. If I write somewhere, if I put on, on a document or on a web or somewhere else, then I can claim. Otherwise, it's not I cannot claim. And facts are the same thing. So I, these are uh, uh, just uh, beyond the, the copyright uh, restriction because if you think something that can be, so if it, is, it becomes tangible, visible, if it is documented, then it's okay. It can be copyrighted. And another question is a co copyright. For example, if you write something and upload it somewhere, or if you write something, I gave it uh, to Dr. Manash, and then he will use it without uh, attributing me maybe, if he uses without uh, attributing me, it will be a violation of copyright because even my name is not there, it is automated. So once something is created, it is copyrighted for sure. So don't think that a uh, writer's name is not there, uh, nothing is there, so I can download it, I can use it, no. You must think that this is automatically copyrighted. Anything created, and uh, it is, if it is tangible, it is automatically copyrighted. So copyright is an automatic thing. So you cannot uh, actually uh, ignore it. And then it can last for a long time. Even what we said that after the death of the author, after 60 years from the death of the author, 90 years, minimum 60, and it can go uh, far also. And uh, I will not go with this. Exceptions, we said the fair use, fair dealing in uh, the copyright law in some countries, you know, uh, there are some exceptions that for the educational resources, for the, the, the printing, uh, photocopying the books by the students will not uh, be the subject to the copyright law. It happened in India, you know, in New Delhi, uh, there was a uh, case filed against uh, some uh, one institution. Uh, then uh, the court uh, says that uh, for, for academic purpose, they photocopy it. If it is not a business purpose, then it's fine. Uh, it will not uh, be uh, the violation of copyright. So this, this depends on the uh, jurisdiction of the country. So the legal provisions of the country. So we cannot conclude here. So this is a copyright tester quiz. Uh, it's there. So you can uh, use it. So this uh, the first phase. So on copyright. So now uh, let me uh, go to another part. Okay, so let us go to uh, the Moodle site. So on the Moodle site, you see, uh, we, uh, we presented this, then we said uh, the copyright basics, what does it mean? And before that, if we have time, uh, I think we have uh, time, okay. I'm going a little quick. So let us play this video. It's very interesting. Copying is not theft. Stealing a thing means one. Manarji, can you uh, hear the sound clearly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. You please play. Left. It makes one thing more. So let me that's start what from copying is for. Copying. Okay, so this video is all about uh, why copying is important. It's not hiding anybody else. So why not copy? So that's that's all. So we just do it. It makes one thing more than for copying for. Sharing ideas with everyone. That's why 
Okay, so uh, that is all about uh, copying. If we copy something and which doesn't actually hurt my uh, uh, actually benefits in that way, then why will not copy? So that is the, the because uh, by nature, our human tendency is like that. So we actually change that tendency. We became very much selfish. We don't like to copy. We don't like to share. I got a knowledge. I don't like to share. So that is a kind of selfishness. So it came uh, through uh, years. It's not uh, easy. Before uh, maybe 500, 600 years, or even long before, people used to copy because uh, used to share much. But nowadays, people don't like to share. That is the uh, message here. So if you share, everybody can be happy. OK, so uh, we already uh, finished this presentation. And then another movie. So this is uh, on uh, copyright basics. So what I told, uh, maybe it will cover that. But let's see. Uh, it's not. OK, it's, it's on copyright basics. I don't know what is what. OK. Uh, so let me copyright. I have. So if you face, anybody face any problem uh, to uh, get into the uh, resources, what you can do, you can uh, just, I, I, am, I put everything into this. So amekamal.wordpress.com. I'm just uh, sharing this link with you. You can go there. The, everything is there also. So this is my, uh, not uh, updated, but uh, I, I, I added all these uh, resources there. So, okay. So you can go to this site and uh, then you can see Simka uh, OU workshop, uh, U -O -U workshop. So you can click there on the left side, then you can get all these things are here. So we are talking about a movie uh, copyright basics. Okay. So if the platform doesn't work, we have alternative. That is the beauty of uh, technology, you see. You can easily switch. So Manaji, uh, is, if the sound is okay, then I can play. Uh, hey Jim, thank okay. you. The other okay. day, my client loved it. You gave it to your client? No, oh. I made a copy for him. We have a limited subscription to those reports. You can't copy them or distribute them without permission. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Next thing I know, you. Very important video. Just watch from the beginning. Okay. Hey Jim, thanks for that report you gave me the other day. My client loved it. You gave it to your client? No. Oh. I made a copy for him. We have a limited subscription to those reports. You can't copy them or distribute them without permission. Really? Yeah. Gee, next thing I know, you'll be posting stuff like that to the web and emailing it all over the place. We're not supposed to do that either? No. No? Yeah. Yeah? No. Intellectual property like published reports, articles, and content you find on the web has to be managed carefully. We have to balance its use with our rights, licenses, and copyright requirements. I know. I read our copyright policy when I joined the company. Good. That's a start. But it really comes down to what we do on a daily basis. If you have a few minutes, I can explain the basics of copyright to you. Okay. Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution gives Congress the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing, for limited times, to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. It means that in the United States, a copyright holder has some exclusive rights to his or her work. And those rights are protected by U.S. copyright law. Oh, I, I always thought no copyright symbol, no problem. Nope. Copyright is automatic. As soon as something is captured in a fixed format, such as being written down or recorded, it is protected by copyright. Neither registration or publication are required, nor is the use of the copyright symbol. Although, it's a good idea to use the copyright symbol as it reminds people that the work is protected by copyright. So what are the copyright holders' rights? Copyright holders have the exclusive right to copy, distribute, perform, and display their work, and the right to create a derivative work, like when a book is made into a movie. This is why you may need permission if you want to email a research report to your project team or a customer, post an article or report on a company wiki or an internet site, reprint articles in the company newsletter, post a news story about our company on our website, or make a photocopy of a newspaper article to hand out at a meeting. Really? For everything? Well, a lot of things. 
such as books, magazine and online articles, songs, screenplays, choreography, photos, artwork, podcasts, and software. They're all protected by copyright. But not everything. Ideas, facts, and data are not protected by copyright law. Logos and taglines aren't either, although they might be protected by trademark law. Anything created by the U.S. government is not covered by copyright law. Uh, neither are works for which the copyright has expired. But what about fair use? If it's for our research, doesn't fair use mean I can use the material? Maybe. Fair use recognizes that certain uses of the copyright-protected work do not require permission from the copyright holder. Fair use allows for the use of the copyright-protected work for commentary, parody, news reporting, research, and education. The U.S. Copyright Act lists four factors to help determine when a use may be considered fair use. The first is the purpose and character of the use. If the use is intended to help derive financial or other business benefit, then it is less likely to be considered fair use. That usually ends the analysis for most business uses. Next is the nature of the copyrighted work. The use of a purely factual work is more likely to be considered fair use than the use of a creative work. Third, an evaluation of the amount and substantiality considers how much of the work was used. Even a small portion can be too much to qualify as fair use if what is used is the part of the work. Finally, fair use considers the effect of the use on the market or the potential. If your use is likely to be sale doctrine permits lending Okay, so uh, we, you can see this uh, later also, so it's not a problem. So I'm just uh, going to, so the, what is the message there? We already discussed this. So the message here is actually, uh, we have to be careful when we use any educational resources, whether uh, the copyright symbol is there or not. We have to be careful when we uh, uh, download it or etc. because downloading means copying. So that's the thing. When you download something, it is uh, uh, copied. So that is the thing. Sometimes uh, nowadays I have a confusion, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, it will uh, be under copyright also. When we take a screenshot, it can be because it is not clearly specified. The technology is coming, and then uh, they maybe they will add this also. But I think that they will now uh, the movement is going on. Open movement is going on. So maybe they will not be uh, able to do it. Uh, screenshot of why they will uh, claim it. But uh, even if you screenshot, take any screenshot. So it is a kind of copying. So it can be uh, another problem. But screenshot is the minimum level because you are not downloading anything. But uh, up to now, the uh, in the copyright law, the copying uh, includes downloading also. So when uh, downloading and screenshot may not be same at this stage. Okay, you don't need to worry. And this uh, movie, uh, this is a long movie, so we'll not go play. This is the trailer. So, but you can uh, just watch this full uh, trailer. The music yeah. business was killed by Napster. Can you hear the, the uh, were derailed sounds by there? digital streaming? Magazines are incredible. Maharaji, sound yes, is clear? Yes. Okay. It's clear. Crisis mode. Yet in this digital information, wild sound west academic clear. journals and the prestigious publishers who own them, like Elsevier, are posting higher profits than nearly any corporation. And this profit has an implication. It limits the amount of individuals around the globe who can solve the world's most complex problems. And that affects us all. I'm Jason Schmidt, and we're setting off to uncover the often hidden world of academic publishing. The real case is, do we want innovation or do we not want innovation? And I think there is an obvious case for openness to unlock innovation. Elsevier is a, is a pain in the neck for us in Africa. And the scholarly publishing industry makes about a 35 to 40 percent profit margin. Wealth management in... Now see what she said. We can go a little industry is around 21%, Toyota is around 12%, Walmart's making around 3%. You see the Walmart, they're making 3%, but Elsevier, 40%. So you see how much money these payroll journals are making. Walmart has to buy something, they have to, have to, have to spend a lot of money buying and they are taking any margin. 
but this uh, Elsevier, they are not owning any, uh, actually they are not uh, owning any uh, article, they are not paying usually, but they are making huge money. Just digital copy they are distributing and the cost is almost zero, but uh, they are earning uh, huge money. That's why this kind of movement is going on. And Walmart is like this evil, you know, giant for a lot of people, but it's 3% compared to 35%. I've honestly never heard of, of corporate. So you can watch this also but later, so it's not a problem. Just I'm just telling the, the main message. So you can watch the whole uh, movie, the paywall, the paywall. So it is, it is a very nice uh, movie in the sense that uh, they interviewed a lot of people of the world. So it will be interesting to listen. And then uh, open access policy. This is not uh, very important. So you can watch later if you understand Bangla, otherwise topic. Copyright basics, test a quiz. So there is a quiz here. So uh, we have, yeah, still we have time. So now you can uh, just have a, uh, uh, just click on this and uh, try to attend this quiz. So, or we can go together. Let us go together. Let us go together, that will be interesting. Uh, okay. Now, uh, just tell me, uh, what will be the answer here? You must register your copyright, otherwise just uh, right here, you have the padlet. You see, I, I didn't share the padlet. So this, uh, this, is your wall so you can create and write here so i am sharing it uh, with your whatsapp yeah okay i am sharing it here okay so you can go there on the on this link and then you can uh, write what you think so first question so you can write here then we can see later so what do you feel you must register your copyright published material or copyright so what you can do you can take one uh, two or three minutes three minutes only and then just uh, do it by yourself then we can we'll come back so i am i am putting in, it into your uh, whatsapp also Okay, so you can uh, just attend this quiz, then we'll go move uh, forward. So take two to three minutes, three minutes maximum. Attend this quiz. Just to understand, this is a self quiz. You have to understand, just to, 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 to torture your understanding. This is very important. When we don't torture our, our concepts or understanding, then uh, we uh, don't get the foundation. We don't get the depth. That is very important. So you must uh, torture the concepts always. Uh, you are not able to connect through my laptop. Which one? Uh, I, I, I am just sharing a Padlet, so you can click on that. And also, okay, just drop it. If you cannot do it, you drop it. It's not a problem. I think it should not be a problem. Is the I, I shared it publicly? It's not a problem. It's a public, so anybody can write. So it's not a problem. Maybe it is a problem with your browser. It's not a problem. Just go to this quiz, tester quiz. I shared the tester quiz uh, on WhatsApp. So you, you attend this this tester quiz. Wikieducator.org copyright. So you, you do it now. So we have a uh, two to three minutes time. In three minutes, you do it. You don't need to do very uh, attentively because you will have chance to review before going to uh, submit your uh, uh, final assessment. So you have time. So after the webinar, you can work on that and you can uh, uh, learn more. So it's not a problem. So do it. Then, uh, yes, someone of you can write here. It's not essential right now. So we'll use that uh, when we'll talk about this. So we'll summarize here. So, okay, so do it on the on, on screen. What you, you uh, know and uh, it will give you the answer clue. 
So the quiz is very interesting. If you just click on false, it says correct. If you for, say true, it says no, and the explanation is there. So it's very uh, uh, actually self-explanatory. And if you, for example, if you come here, so are you think that uh, the free to package and you are free to package, repackage and sell content sourced from Wikipedia? Is it okay? So you said true, it's correct. And why? I will say later. We'll see later in the next presentation, we'll see why you can use anything from Wikipedia. You can uh, use that anywhere. You can download, you can use, you can edit, you can remix, you can do everything under some condition, of course. So what are the conditions we'll see? Okay, I think uh, you are already done. And uh, just I'm going through uh, uh, all these things uh, so that you can understand the things. So that's what uh, I'm doing. So don't worry if you cannot uh, complete everything on time. So, uh, okay, fine. Okay, it is here. And then what about the international perspective? There is a tester quiz, I will add it later so that uh, maybe after this webinar, I will add it. Uh, you can uh, attend that also. So these are the similar type of self quizzes. You can attend and you can uh, learn by yourself. So the answer key is there, then you will think. So it doesn't mean that if you uh, checked true and it is right or it's wrong, then you check false. It is not like that. It is given to you to dig deeper into your understanding depth so always try to understand why it says correct why it says uh, not correct false so you have to think of that that's very important so what international perspective so when for example you are using something from india so uh, a book written by an indian writer it has been published in india so it is of course under the copyright law of india fine Another book has been a similar book has been written uh, someone uh, from uh, Sri Lanka. Our colleagues uh, from Sri Lanka are there. So they uh, wrote one book. So that is, uh, that belongs to the copyright of Sri Lanka. Another one, uh, so our Manansar is there. Uh, uh, the, the, I think he's here, uh, the VC of uh, Hamdad University. Uh, so he's a very big uh, writer and you know uh, all over uh, the world he's very much famous for e-learning for distance education especially and he was awarded by Commonwealth of Learning so he, he got two times I think uh, the, the award from Commonwealth of Learning so he's very uh, high level expert so we're happy that we got him in Bangladesh now so uh, for example Manansar uh, wrote uh, one book so so three countries three copyright law now if you mix up what will happen the thing is we'll see later uh, you see in the resource uh, section i put something here in the resource section you see uh, okay uh, in the resource section i put the history or uh, statue of any barney convention barney convention you see barney convention is here barney convention Barney Convention, actually, this is an international uh, convention. A lot of countries that you see signed. Bangladesh is here, Sri Lanka is here, everybody signed. Most of the countries signed on this convention. So they agreed that when something or on resource is used in Bangladesh, for example, a, a, a Indian writer wrote the book in India, and if I use in Bangladesh, it will be protected by these two laws, copyright law of India as well as the copyright law of Bangladesh. Because if I violate the law, so how they will reach me, how they will catch me. So that's why in that convention, they specified that the camp came to a consensus that once uh, something is created, there is a law, for example, something is created in India, Bangladesh. So there is a law here. And then if it's used in India, so when somebody is violating or something happened there, so this two law will uh, give the protection 
to the author to the copyright holder. So this is very interesting because these all these countries you see they are the uh, signatory. Uh, I think India is here also. Uh, Denmark, EFG. Okay, India is also. India, Sri Lanka, everybody is here. Yes, India is here. You see, India is here. So, you see, for international, uh, if you look at the in, from international perspective, you can see the same thing here also. Okay, so then uh, the guidance of open uh, educational resource package. These are the resources I added. So let us go to the workflow. So we were here. So we already covered this, the, the 4.3, we covered the copyright uh, inter, from international perspective. And then this is an activity you have to do. There is a case here. And after this case, based on this case, all these quizzes are there. These are the self quizzes, very nice. You can do it. If you are interested to know about OER very well, you have to do it. That is very important. And everything is very much organized here. So you can go one by one, then you can learn everything. And now come to the point. What is openness? When you talk about openness, what does it mean? Why you need to be open? So that is very important thing. When you talk about open, so can you uh, write here on Padlet? So I can uh, erase all these things from here. Say, I can erase everything. Okay, I'm clearing. Now, please write here, what do you mean by uh, openness? What do you mean? Just one word. Open means what? You just uh, create a, a space for you by clicking there, here, and write, what do you mean by open? Open means what? When you talk about open, can be accessed. Very good. Anything, any word, not the long sentence, just a word. Available to everyone, very good. Without having a, any barrier, very nice. Free, yes, very important point. Uh, can be accessed, free to everyone. So, yeah, we got a lot of points here already. So, one thing is it should be free. And another thing is everybody should have the access to use it. Okay, so let me, uh, okay. Let me share a slide here, a slide on I mean, page here, I'll write here now. So when we talk about open, openness, let me write, okay. So maybe uh, when we talk about open, if something is open, yes, we got, it should be free. It should be accessible. And it, the permission should be there. Sometimes something is accessible. So it is online, so I can access it. It's not a problem. But the most important thing is this permission. This permission is most important. And of course, free. Sometimes it is not fully free because if you like to share something, uh, some transaction cost is there. So if you share something in a printed form, maybe you need to cover the uh, printing costs. So sometimes it may not be free, fully free. That is true. But the permission should be there. If someone gets this document, what they can do with this? So that is what very important. So we will talk about that. How these permissions are given, how we can learn about these permissions. So our time is going fast. Let us go a little fast. So very nice. Thank you very much. So let me uh, clear it, keep it clear, because a lot of exercises we will do. And Manarji, uh, how much time I have now? Uh, Manarji, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another 30 minutes you have. Okay, 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. So uh, just I'm requesting, madam, if I need uh, another 5 to 10 minutes, please allow. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, why open matters? So we said, let us go there. What the international commitment we have? So there is a quiz here. So you can attend this, why open actually matters. So for example, uh, we are going together, it's not a problem. So universal declaration of human rights. So I can share it with on your WhatsApp also. You can go with us because someone may have some problem with accessing. Okay. So say the universal declaration of human rights to commit free education. So they said that, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, there is a universal declaration of human rights. They said uh, higher education should be free. Only higher education should be free. What do we think? It's true or false? So we have to look at this declaration, of course. So say I'm telling this is true. Is it wrong? Why? The commitment to free education is not, is restricted to the elementary and fundamental stages. Free education. So the commitment to free education is restricted to elementary and fundamental stages. You see, in that declaration, uh, it is uh, kind of tricky now. So maybe uh, recently, I think that they are going to, uh, they already updated as so far I understand, but uh, it was restricted to elementary and fundamental stages that education will be free. But for higher education, it is not free. So if you write false, it's okay. And then open digital content is an example of a rivalrous commodity which dis diminishes uh, through consumption. So if uh, open digital content, if some digital content is open, so it is a kind of rivalrous com commodity. So let us check false. This is correct. So if I check true, what would ha be happen? If you download open digital content, it is still available for others to use. So you see a lot of uh, points are there to justify why things should be open. Okay, let's come back. Uh, so, uh, creativity. So, let us see this movie. Very interesting movie. A very short. Uh, okay, I think it will be open here. Okay. This is from Creative Commons. So, let us see what they told. Okay. We are not watching the full movie. It's not essential because you can watch it. So you see uh, here what we what message we got from this movie. What message we got? Uh, you can you can write on the on Padlet. So what message you got actually? Because you didn't watch the whole movie. Just uh, in, in 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 a nutshell, one or two words you can mention. What actually the, this movie is telling? Okay. Okay, so if you are okay, so we don't need to go uh, in detail. Okay, fine. So you can just think of that. What does they, they actually uh, indicate here? Why they are telling that building on past? That means whatever happened in our past was in past 200, 300 years was totally a kind of selfishness. People actually started to forget sharing sharing with others and always we build something on past 
So now what uh, the open movement is going on, they are not ignoring past, but they are trying to build on that thing. So we'll see, we are not ignoring copyright, but copyright law got the provision that you as a copyright holder can license, can give permission to others to use it without writing you, without having permission, written permission from you. You have this right, but you are not using it because I don't know why. So if you share something with others, it doesn't hurt you in true sense. And we have a lot of examples that says that if something is shared openly, it can increase the quality, it can lower the cost. Sometimes it uh, become cost becomes very zero and it uh, creates my exposure, huge exposure all over the world. So we have to understand the value of uh, open sharing. And uh, this video, again, we can already, we always saw this maybe, but uh, we can uh, see it again. So when we share, everybody wins. So that is the another message. Yeah, if we share, everybody wins. So I'm not losing, everybody wins. So what's wrong with that? So self-interest is better. Sometimes I, I, I use this example in my economics class. So selfishness is very bad, but self-interest is good. Suppose I uh, uh, just constructed a road up to my house and the lands beside these roads uh, got actually uh, that the price of these lands got high. So the value becomes very much high. Other people have been benefited. So what's wrong with me? So they didn't hurt my interest. So I needed to uh, construct this road up to my house and other people are getting benefit out of it. What's wrong? But if I'm selfish, I will not allow this. I will not be able to tolerate this. So that's why this message is coming from Creative Commons. They are telling that when you share, everybody wins. So let us see what uh, they actually told. We need to talk about sharing. And I'm not talking about taxi and hotel apps. I'm talking about real sharing, the kind my mother taught me about. Turns out, sharing isn't just good for the playground. It's also good for grown-ups. Community, collaboration, and sharing are at the heart of human advancement. These values built the web we love. The idea that evolution is nothing more than a selfish struggle for survival is utterly, spectacularly incomplete. It appears we need each other after all. Harvard researcher Martin Novak calls it the snuggle for survival. We are hardwired for sharing. When we share, everyone wins. The giver, the receiver, and our communities. Studies have shown that with just a few sharers in the mix, they will inspire an entire culture of sharing. Now, if sharing is at the core of successful societies, then why do we have some of the most restrictive copyright laws in history? The commons is an idea as old as we are, but today, most of the world's creativity will be locked away for decades, even for those who want to share. You already know Creative Commons. You've seen our logo on Wikipedia, YouTube, Medium, okay. Flickr, and more. So, We're even in the... Okay, fine. So, uh, in this case, what we actually uh, saw is... Uh, Sharing uh, actually uh, is not uh, meaning that you don't like to share. Even if you like to share, uh, the, the system will not allow you. Because if you uh, uh, create something, if you publish something or with any, any publisher, you will find that uh, it is restricted. So the law is there, copyright rights are there, so it is totally restricted. So even if you want to share, you will not be shared. So the whole world is actually, and you see now during this COVID crisis, what happens? If you don't share, uh, now at least it is a big uh, actually uh, kind of blow on our selfishness. Still, we can see that some uh, countries, some uh, leaders, they are just behaving in a way that uh, the, the, they don't like to share, but they are bound to share now. At this stage, everybody, uh, they don't find any way, no way. So that's why everybody is uh, working together so that they can find some solution. It is not the solution for a particular country. I added a video there uh, from my wall that I, I mentioned that for a particular country, it, it cannot be solved. 
if, for example, one country solve this problem, it is not meaning that it will be detached from uh, the rest of the world. So you have to share, you have to work collaboratively. So then the world become safer. Otherwise it is not possible. And a lot of other videos are there. So now let us go to, uh, to the second presentation. I'm going fast. Uh, so I, I know that it is uh, kind of stressful for you to follow everything, but uh, I'm just giving uh, the, the ideas so that you can have a look later and uh, supporting videos also, so that uh, you don't face any problem understanding these things. Now, up to now, uh, we actually learned few things. One is, what is copyright? What are the restrictions there? What are the challenges with copyright? Then we learned uh, how this uh, open sharing is blocked in the world. Then we saw why sharing is important for us, for the society, for the, the institution, society. So, okay. Is it okay? Sound is okay? Sound is okay. Okay, fine. Sound is okay. Okay, fine. So, uh, so let us talk about uh, the OER. That's where we are talking about OER. How to share these things? How to use the the things which are on net or uh, in digital form or anywhere? How to share, uh, download this? How to customize it? So let us uh, see some quotes. So human history uh, is uh, A.G. Wells. He said human history becomes more and more race between education and catastrophe. Why? Because you know the disaster is there. And also education, the same thing happens to education. Millions of millions of children, they are outside the orbit of education. And also millions of people are uh, going to be marginalized because of floods, cyclone, etc. These things are kind of raised between these two. So sometimes we find the education is depressed. Sometimes we find the, the, the people, uh, the poverty level uh, becomes uh, up, etc., etc. And this crisis, we don't know where it will go. Now another catastrophe is here in terms of uh, and then you see what Amartushan said. He clearly mentioned that if you continue to leave vast majority of the people of the society, uh, vast majority of the people uh, of the world outside the orbit, outside the orbit of uh, education. We can we make this world not only less just but also less secure. We are not blocking education is not good for, good for the society. And uh, you know uh, Lawrence Lessing, he is the he was the creator of uh, Creative Commons. It is a very long history. You can uh, you can be uh, interested to uh, just browse his name in Wikipedia and somewhere else and. Uh, study his history, it is very, he struggled a lot to establish th this uh, free movement. So it was really a uh, fantastic uh, work he did. So uh, he said monopoly controls, when you have a, a, a monopoly control, it is truly exception for a free society. In a free society, I never do anything by myself. But I think I will find that it is best that is cross. So if I find that what I feel, what I feel that is best, is best, no, in a free society it is not possible. But in a closed society, you, you know a lot of closed societies are there, where the ruler, the dictators, they dictate, they do everything, what they say, all citizens uh, must, do, must follow that. So this closed societies, this is a role. Monopoly is a role. What they feel, they do it. They don't care the life of the people, they don't care anybody. But in a free society, you cannot do it. You have to talk, you have to discuss, you have to tolerate. These are the things you have to share. You have to accept what other people are telling. So it is not a race that what you are thinking other people will uh, uh, protect it. It's not race. So understanding 
and collaboration is very important in a free society. So now you can think of uh, our societies, how much we are free in terms of sharing the resources, etc., etc. And then uh, William Cooper, he said, freedom has thousand charms that the slaves, however contented, never know. You see, very important quote. The slaves never feel that, never experience that. The freedom got thousands charms. So, if you have something copyrighted, what happens? It becomes expensive, time consuming. If you need permission from someone and you have to uh, use it and produce something new, a lot of restrictions are there and low scalability. You cannot immediately do something. You cannot share with a lot of people, millions of people, it's not possible. Limited access and slow innovation, for sure it's slow innovation. If my colleague, Dr. Johir is here, uh, he did something and uh, I took it and I worked on this. Then it's fine for me. I can add something new. If I take, uh, I produce the same thing what he did, what will happen? What the new things will be added? So it is innovation becomes slow. If you don't share, innovation becomes slow. So you have a lot of materials on the world. We can use it and then we can add something from our, our own. So that is innovation. Innovation means doing something new. So it will reduce the cost. If I can have something, one book, for example, on project management, if I can download from somewhere which, uh, is, uh, which is permitted to modify uh, and customize, then I don't need, need to uh, employ someone uh, with, for example, 300 taka, a uh, 3 lakh taka or 2 lakh taka. I don't need to uh, engage someone. And because I, I can readily, so I can make the cost almost zero, just uh, the printing cost. So to develop the materials, we need to uh, actually engage people. So in this case, if I have uh, everything ready, just I can customize and I can use. Access, it will be easy for everybody. And quality for sure, I believe that it is a very important point. So if my uh, things are uh, online, someone else will put comment. If there is a mistake, anything. For example, you are commenting here that I cannot access. I cannot find it. It cannot be accessed. Your site is not okay. So your comment made me aware that my site is not right. It is not in a right condition. So I can improve. So that's how actually quality improves if we uh, share. So if it is uh, already reserved, so it's called already reserved copyright. So ARR copyrighted. So if the resource is ARR copyrighted, already reserved, that means you are not compromising anything. You are not allowing anybody to use or reuse it, remix it. So if it is like that, so these three things are actually becomes very high. Access becomes very low, innovation quality becomes very low. So this is the, these are the things. And then what happens in 21st century? Somebody blocked. What happens? This uh, lady you see, Albekian, she's from uh, Kazakhstan. You know, Sea Hub or Science Hub. So they have, uh, she uploaded 50 million articles download from, downloaded from LCVR and these big, big journals. What she will do? She was a graduate student there, research student. She couldn't access anything. Then she uh, got uh, as emotionally. She did it. Uh, she didn't know what she is doing, but she how much emotional she was. You see, how much risky it was. And then she did it. And uh, one case is uh, still going on against her from uh, in, in, at, at an U.S. court. So these publishers uh, they, they filed a case against her. But she. Uh, uh, actually uh, created this uh, repository with all these downloaded things, which are totally violation. But people visit this site much more, 200, 300 times more than they visit the paywall uh, uh, journal sites. You see, so people want this freedom. They don't want that the, the knowledge should be uh, in prison. Knowledge should be in paywall. Uh, yeah. So, so copyright matters in technology. And so what do you think? Now, come to the, this COVID crisis. We are going online. We are using a lot of resources now. 
So whenever we are downloading anything, we are violating copyright. So now we don't have any other alternative to using uh, digital resources, which are online. So how will you use the book now? You cannot use the book. You have to create the digital resource and you have to share. Previously, you used the book, photocopied book in the class. But now if you go online, then it will be cut. Because if you go to uh, online, that means you are creating a digital footprint. Because uh, Nishaji knows this very well. Because you are creating a digital footprint. So you will be cut. Anytime you will, you will be cut. So and for your career, for your uh, exposure, it is not good that you used all these uh, violated, I mean, copyrighted things, violating the copyrighted, copyright law, you use all these things. Any time you can be caught. So that's why when we go online, we must be, yeah, it's not meaning that online or face-to-face, -face, it doesn't matter. In face-to-face, -face, maybe within the class, we used it, but we did uh, unethical. We bought a book which has been photocopied. So why you need to use that, that book particularly, maybe it is not because that is another debate we can debate for hours for on that whether at all it is important to buy a book from us uh, publisher and implement it in bangladesh i don't think that in bangladesh india our context is different there is no case in that book from bangladesh uh, india or sri lanka so why we will as it is will apply this so in that case we can use all these materials which are available online permitted and then we can add the Bangladeshi cases and make it highly meaningful for our learners. So you see, uh, when you uh, go online, then you need to download, you need to reshape, you need to, uh, it is expensive. You must uh, look for the payroll uh, uh, sites uh, and you can uh, minimize the cost and digital footprint is there. So you must be careful. The security is there and uh, you will, uh, your identity will be in track. And see in China, this is the message from uh, as a news cover covered in China. So uh, China students will now study online because coronavirus has shot school. Same for India and Bangladesh. Okay, and Abhijit Banarsi, you know the Nobel laureate from uh, India. What he said recently in an interview with Indian Express, he said education is completely scalable. So no reason to reinvent the wheel. Some people are thinking that oh, what will happen if you go online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't need to worry because he's a Nobel laureate. He, his research says that uh, it is completely scalable. Tech-based education is completely scalable, and models are there. You don't need to reinvent. Just look into uh, uh, the sites, website, and look into the world. A lot of models are there. Success models are there, so you can use it. And also our uh, Dr. Manansar is here. He is very expert in this. So he got a lot of uh, models also. So uh, we can use it. It's not a problem. So, and what is uh, OER? By definition, actually, uh, there is a latest definition. You know, uh, there is a OER recommendation in uh, 2017 uh, uh, in uh, Slovenia. There was a Congress. And uh, after that, following that, a uh, lot of uh, phases were there. And finally, they came to this definition that it will be uh, the thing which uh, will be under copyright, fine, but it has been released under the open licenses that will permit no cost access, reuse, repurpose, adoption, and distribution. So this is the latest definition of OER, and uh, it is included into the uh, OER recommendation. It was not like this same before. The previous definition is a little bit uh, different. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, you can just read this uh, recommendation. So you can go to UNESCO site, you can search, you can find it. And what is open? Uh, we said, okay, something will go open if we can reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute, retain. I don't uh, just uh, like to talk more about retain. It is an extreme case. But uh, David Oily gave this uh, four uh, first, and now uh, it's a uh, five uh, principles. Uh, he said, okay, uh, anybody can reuse, I can copy, I can share it with my friends, everybody, I can copy, and I can revise. If I like, I can customize, I can remix, I can mix it with other things, I can redistribute, I can share with others. 
So uh, you can do a lot of things with it. So I'm not going through all these licenses, etc. I will just focus on the licenses quickly so that you can understand the license. Then we'll go for some exercises. And all these things are there. So you see the license are there. So in Creative Commons is an uh, you know US-based uh, uh, NGO. They actually promoted. We said uh, about lessons, uh, Lawrence lessons. So he created this Creative Commons. They are working with this. So uh, as you know, I am attached to this uh, their central committee. So they are coming up a lot of changes. They are working hard and uh, they have this version license. These are the KT Cons licenses. So this version was 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. Now they are working on something else also. So 4.0 is the latest version of KT Cons licenses. So you see CC BY. BY means you see the, the, the picture. Always note that everywhere you have BY. You have buy everywhere. So that means whenever you, you use anyone's document, you must attribute. That's the first thing. And second thing is, if you have find this license on something, you just attribute, that's all. We'll see how to attribute. And if you find this symbol, this is another license, this is by essay, share like. If you find, buy means attribution, you have to attribute. So you see by essay. So if it is share alike license, then you have to put the same license on the document you are creating. For example, if you take my book, part of my book, which is uh, under CC by essay, then you change it, whatever you do, when you will share with others, you must put this, because this is the condition uh, I put on my uh, book. So you, can, you don't need my permission, but whenever you have this license, you never uh, need to ask permission you can uh, uh, take it, you can download it. This is the first thing. Second thing is if you have this license, you can change, you can edit, whatever you like, you can do it. And uh, you can use any license on this. It doesn't matter. Just you have to attribute. You can put uh, CC by share like also. You can put CC by ND also, it doesn't matter. But if you have this license, so if my document got this license, you must, share you document if it included my portion in CC by SS. Some people say, okay, part of this document, I, I will took from you and part of the document I added. So what should we, we do? So people become still selfish. People think that, okay, uh, this is your part, this is my part. So for this part, CC by SS, and for this part, okay, uh, I can put anything. It is not fair. If you have a milk, if you put something into milk, how will you separate? Yes, for text materials, you can separate. For video, how will you separate? For uh, image, how will you separate? <laughs> for image, if you can take an yeah, image, okay. something, you can put something, uh, one license for that, it's not possible. So it is always better if you use any CC by license, you always uh, CC by essay on the device. And CC by NC. I said my resource cannot be shared uh, for commercial purpose. So if I use my resource, if you use my resource, my book, you cannot take money for this book for, from your students. Maybe, maybe you can, if you print it, you can cover the cost, maybe. That is allowed anyhow. Logically, it is allowed. But uh, it is always better to use the digital format if you print, then question will come. This is probably done. Don't need to incur any cost, so that's fine. And then CC by NCSA, two restrictions are there. So if my book got this license, if you use it, you have to be careful. You cannot take money from the students. You, if you produce something out of it, it must contain the same license, same license. If you have share alike, the same license should be put on the on your content what you got what you derive and no derivative or some sometimes it is a non-derivative or no derivative. So non-derivative means you cannot change anything. Anything, title, anything. My book is there, you can share this link or you can uh, download, it's, it's permitted since CC, CC license, so you can permit a download, but you cannot change any single word, anything, any design, nothing. 
And then I put another restriction. You cannot change. Even you cannot take money out of it. For this, you can take money. You can take money uh, from the students if you like. But you cannot change, you can take the money. But for this, you cannot do it. So these are the uh, licenses. You see, uh, when you use, uh, for example, okay, let me keep it here. Okay. So when you uh, use these licenses, if you find these licenses, so usually we don't tell these two licensed works are OER. These are not OER. You see, you cannot change it. You can only download it. You can uh, reuse it. You can copy. It. But you cannot uh, you look at the fiber principles. You can revise. You cannot customize. So why this is even? It is uh, kind of, in one sense, it is not that much useful. So that's why you don't call it uh, OER if we follow the fiber principle or four principle. It is not, these are not OER. OER are these ones. And also public domain. Public domain is something uh, which actually uh, is copyright free. That means, for example, Rabindran, Rabindran, you know, Rabindran song, we listen to Rabindran song now. Uh, most of the works of Rabindran is copyright free now because after his death, as per Indian copyright law, uh, there are, I think, 60 years. So after 60 years, everything became uh, copyright free. So now you can download it, you can use it. But what will happen? If you change the music, do you think that the people will accept it? No. Rabindran is not there. Guru's is, Guru's is not there. But the thing is, you must recall the, the, the second provision, which is what? The moral rights. So you must attribute. You cannot change. It is natural that you will attribute. You, you, you don't need to attribute, but moral rights means you are just acknowledging or recognizing or giving credit to this uh, great person. And also, you uh, are not violating any uh, spirit embedded in this uh, song. What uh, the, the uh, uh, I mean, uh, what uh, Rabindran Thakur wanted or wh how he uh, felt this, you cannot change it. That meaning should not be changed. That integrity you must have. So even if it is public domain, you can use it uh, without attribution, but we usually attribute uh, the the creator and we usually try to we must try to not usually uh, we must try to keep it uh, in our mind that we cannot change the sense of the music what he actually tried to say so that's why and another uh, license you will say this is after the death and you can put cc0 you can see some documents uh, the license is cc0 cc0 means now I am alive now. So if I want to sacrifice my book for or this slide, presentation slide for public, so I would like to put it into public domain, I'd like to sacrifice my copyright, then I can put CC0. So this is similar to public domain. So these are a lot of things you can go through and learn. So this is a new in CC license. So you see the, there is a clarity about adaptions so in CC license 4.0. That's why we said, so there are some variations. In 4.0, ND licensed works can be changed, but cannot be shared publicly. You can use within the class. So that is what uh, now uh, permitted. So when you have ND license, you can use it for your students within the class in a closed system but you cannot share publicly that is not permitted so this is a, a good thing at least we can do it and you see the compatibility chart when you mix the document for example you take something from uh, somewhere which is cc by and this is the most flexible you see you can uh, use it a lot of cases with, you can mix it with a lot of licensed works but if you use for example any license to work andy you cannot mix it with anything, anything. It doesn't go with anything because you can change it. So you can just always notice this kind of uh, computability chart when you prepare the documents. So if you use OER, different OERs, you always check it. So what license to work you will find. And uh, for example, you have CC by essay and then look for this only. 
only. So don't go to this. CC by NC doesn't uh, go with this. You cannot mix it with this because it says NC, it says SA. So, but on the, uh, on your derived document, you have to put CC by SA. So where this uh, NC will go, it is not possible. So that's why you always have to care this uh, computability chart. And uh, you have this attribution. How you will attribute? This is called TASL. So you need to specify the title, author, source, and license. This must be specified. We'll see a little bit how to uh, find this uh, proper attribution. So you see, uh, this is a kind of attribution. So in this attribution, what they say? Here to Commons birthday. So this is the title, fine. Uh, and this is the author and this is the license. So this title actually actually uh, got, uh, got the source also because this is the beauty of uh, digital content. So you can tag it uh, with the link. So this is a very good uh, attribution. Also, there are some variations. Some people said this like this because if you go to this photo, you can know this, but this is not good one. It is okay if you don't have space, you can, you can use it, but it is not a good one, I think. And incorrect attributions, the photo by Creative Commons. Sometimes we write photo by uh, UNESCO or something like this. So it's not uh, right, photo, photo uh, Wikipedia, it's not right. So you have to go by a uh, very uh, clear attribution process. And these are the things. So you can use, so how to, that's just very quick. I don't know how much time I have. Manarji, how much time I have? Yeah, Professor Mustafa, it is already over. It is eight minutes over. Oh, okay. So can I take a... Uh, yeah. Ten minutes past 12 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm just I'm going quickly going there and I will show a little uh, how to search, etc. And all, or I will I'll use the video later. I will add you some can, video. Uh, Dr. Mustafa, if you can conclude uh, by another two, three minutes, it's okay. Okay, two, three minutes will be difficult. Five minutes, it's okay. Okay, go five. ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So these are the, some statistics you can see that how uh, these are saved. So in this digital world, how the money can be saved if we share. And uh, these are the some statistics. So how to find OER? So there are a lot of repositories, uh, so Wikipedia, a lot of repositories are there. You can find OERs there. So. I will go for some search engine. So a lot of OERs are there. These are here, you can follow this. These are not important because I will not go through all these things. So, but the one thing is very important for you all is uh, to mainstream OER. So if your university doesn't have any policy, you cannot actually uh, implement this. So that's why it is always important that a top down policy will be there, top down strategy. So university must have policy and bottom up and some capacity building training, what Simca is doing, the Commonwealth Learning is doing, you can attend these things. So now you are here. So these are the bottom up approach and inside out. So this is uh, important that, uh, that the people uh, who are trained here, you have to talk to your fellow uh, colleagues so that they can understand. So if you have a bigger uh, community, then it will be easy to implement. And, uh, uh, this is uh, the presentation and now I will just uh, quickly go to, uh, very quickly, uh, in one or two minutes, I will, I will be able to finish. Uh, so let me take you to the Moodle site. So Moodle site, I'm just going through the Moodle site, you can watch all these things. So the videos are here, you can watch all these videos there. Uh, then how to find OER. So a lot of repositories are there. So we can go Google search and something. I will show a few, one or two. Then I will show how to attribute. So these two things I will show, and other things are not uh, very essential. You can see later. Okay, so let us go to uh, find something. Uh, say, okay, you have Google. so we all do Google search. Uh, say uh, open pedagogy. Open pedagogy. If you search this, how many came? So just keep it note, keep a note on this. So it is uh, 31 million, 31 million. Now, fine, you can go for Google Advancers. You know it, most of you know it. Google Advancers, very interesting, it is very important. Usually people uh, don't do it, 
but if you they do it to advancers, it's Google advancers. You go setting and you will find the advancers. So in, in advancers, you can filter. You have uh, not filtered by license. So I can say, okay, I want something what I will use or share. Okay, advancers, how many you are getting? Now uh, it's not showing. So yeah, it's not done. Okay, so it will be a uh, little less. It's a little filtered. Uh, okay, let me, I can go. Just I am putting a, a double quote here. So it's a phrasal search. Phrasal search. I go in there. It will exactly take you to the uh, very few sites. So first you got almost 10 million. Now you came to maybe uh, 1,000 or 500 like this. So always use this uh, uh, quote when you search, it's a phrasal quote. So another thing is, if you uh, like to move specific, you have this and then right side, colon, edu, the now search. Now you got the OER directly, because advances you will get OER, little OER, not OER like this, but it will be filtered later, but you have to check everything. But if you search here, you will find it is all the OERs will come. So you see, you see the license here, you can see here the license. So the license is here. So the, all the platform contains all these OERs, CC by NC, CC by NC license. So this is another thing. And I will take you, uh, for bid users, how to go uh, for bid users. Okay, so let us go for uh, YouTube, go to YouTube. Little slow, okay. So open pedagogy is here, fine. You search open pedagogy. If you put the code, it will be much uh, lower in number. So then go for filter. You see the filter is here. Then you see creative commons is here, creative commons. Click there. Now you will find few videos. And if you like to have a long video, short video, four minute video, you can easily get it. So these are four minute video. And if you like long video, you can get it. These are the YouTube search. So you can get the, the OERs through this search. And uh, then uh, I'll, I'll finish here. So license chooser. You can go to uh, Kitcom space, so type license chooser, or you can search uh, on uh, Google for license chooser. So if you like to, okay. So see, uh, for example, you like to, the question is here. Uh, so you like to customize it, and you like to uh, put share like. The license will come here. You can copy it. So the link is here, you can copy it and put it in, into your document. It's very easy. Or you can go for little detail. Here you can write a lot of things, help others to attribute you. So you can uh, write a little more here. Then other people will know you, everything uh, will be more clear. They can just copy and, and paste it, it will be easy. And another uh, technique is, you see Open Washington, they created a very fantastic thing. Uh, okay, you can put the information here. All the resources you got, you can put the information, then it will create. For example, if I put microeconomics here, and my name is uh, Mustafa. So maybe you will, uh, okay, Mustafa, okay. Uh, sorry, that's micro. And the URL, maybe I can take from here. This is my URL, say. And then I can put it here, URL here. My name is Mustafa. And then look at the license there. So if the license is, for example, CC BY, for example, or CC BY SA, then what is the license uh, version? So maybe 2.5, say 2.5, fine. See, you see, you got this. Now you can copy it and you can paste it on your document. It is very easy. It's a billion. And uh, 
I already finished. I am just uh, telling you uh, two things. Uh, all these documents are here, but uh, by today, you have a lot of activities within the uh, presentation. What through I, I put everything, whatever uh, I couldn't cover. Yeah, I was not supposed to cover also because it's a very short time. And you have two things refreshing time. So after this presentation, maybe one or two hours after, you can try this. And of course, you will take this challenge. We are challenged. I created some questions for you. Uh, it is a graded question. Uh, you take the challenge. So uh, you, it is for you. It will, self, uh, it will be uh, automatically graded. You will understand what is right or what is wrong. Then you can uh, write me on WhatsApp. I, can, uh, I will be with you uh, in this afternoon. Thank you very much for careful listening to me. It, it is a very big issue, big uh, movement now. And uh, it is very difficult to finish in this uh, very short time, but I try to cover. I'm happy. Thank you very much. So thanks, madam, for giving me the time. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mustafa. This is, uh, uh, everybody, everybody can understand because uh, some people are aware about open educational resources in this group. Some people uh, knew and some people uh, understand OER but not uh, revising and remissing and creating OERs. And uh, some people heard about uh, OER and, and open access, but they cannot differentiate. So uh, there are very uh, a number of uh, concepts need to be understand in this regard. And this is, uh, this is not at all, I can say that new concept, but uh, new for us to practice. And this is more important. Uh, everybody should practice this one uh, than only it can be possible. Here, I would like to just point it out for all the participants. I, I can ask to, uh, Dr. Mustafa also can put it in the uh, WhatsApp group. So one very short course uh, for understanding of open educational resources. Uh, the Commonwealth of Learning has been developed. Uh, that is a two hours course. And you can earn certificate uh, directly from Commonwealth of Learning uh, through online. That is Learn OER. Learn OER. It's a uh, two hours course. Uh, please do it and uh, more you can learn about this, uh, what Professor Mustafa trying to do it here. As well as Professor Mustafa has been given uh, so many videos and uh, attachments to the Moodle platform, which you need to be practiced. And some quizzes also he has been put into the uh, box you you can practice so that uh, through that practicing we can able to learn thank you uh, professor mustafa joining with us and uh, giving your time and uh, uh, now i would like to move towards the concluding uh, of this uh, day can I uh, before going to the day is a little bit late uh, we have taken uh, more time but uh, i'm moving uh, with that and uh, 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 yeah uh, just uh, I would like to request the participant. There is a post workshop feedback form, so they there must uh, be submitted by today. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to invite Professor uh, Madhu Pararji to uh, give concluding remarks and uh, uh, can also uh, listen if uh, uh, the uh, Jitendra Pandey is there and. Uh, 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 Professor Pant is here, if they can say one or two uh, sentence. Uh, before, uh, but uh, before that, I would like to over to Professor Madhu Parar. If time permits, we can move there. Professor Madhu Parar, please. Thank you, uh, Manas, for this um, session. And uh, must thank uh, Professor Mustafa for uh, explaining us the OER. The best, I mean, the concepts, maybe few people, as Manas said, they know. For a few, uh, it was new, but it is a very important uh, theme, open education resources, and especially at the time of pandemic. So every organization, they are going to use this open education resources because there's so much of resource. I will not get into so much of detail about it because already we have passed uh, the time. But the best part, what I liked about Professor Mustafa's presentation was that how he identified so many videos and that's the important part the teacher uh, has to play. 
uh, these days. It's not that the technology is there. So the, the role of teacher becomes very important because the teacher has to identify which video has to be shown to the, that is basically what we call it as a curation. So that was very interesting that what he identified as the videos uh, in his presentation. I'm sure he has given uh, a lot of homework he will be giving and all of you, you can check with in the WhatsApp or with the Moodle. Uh, lastly, uh, thank you all, especially Professor Mustafa. And I'll request uh, Professor Durgesh to um, uh, wind up this session uh, if Dr. Jitendra want to say something. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, now over to uh, Professor Dur uh, Durgesh Pant. I think uh, um, uh, I think he's uh, he's uh, busy or uh, somewhere else okay. probably. Yeah, but maybe he's Jitendra, maybe Jitendra can wind it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank now you, now Dr. Jitendra can. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Mustafa, for your detailed session on OERs. I'm sure that all the participants found it extremely beneficial and greatly welcome the opportunity to exchange perspectives and learn from your experience. Thank you, Simta, for making this possible. Tomorrow, we have a session on communicating content through social media by Dr. Ajit Kumar. I hope to see you online tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy, good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all.